This is the Trading Psychology Podcast. This is VP, creator of No Nonsense Forex and author of the book No Nonsense Forex Trading Psychology. And with me, as always, from Maverick Trading, it's Rob Reinhold. Hello, it's nice to be here. And I really hope that everyone has been enjoying this trading psychology podcast that we put together. This is something that Patrick and I have put a lot of time and effort to in our lives and it has really paid off for us and we love sharing it with you. We saw that love and dedication uh, last episode when we did our book giveaway and I saw a lot of comments from people I had never seen before. So uh, shout out to all the lurkers. You know, we do appreciate seeing you and uh, hearing what you have to say every once in a while. We have chosen the five winners of that book giveaway. And uh, Rob, go ahead and uh, tell us who they are. And I think um, if for some reason you're not listening to this episode, Rob's going to contact you through the YouTube comments section uh, afterwards. Uh, or actually, no, we're pre-recording this. So by the time you hear this, you should have already gotten something from him. Go ahead and, and uh, tell us how you chose the winners, Rob, and uh, tell us who won. Well, I didn't follow a very, very specific scientific method to where I picked the ones that I liked. That was pretty good. Actually, I rewarded people that were early to comment. And I also rewarded people that shared a lot about their stories and about why they want the book. So we're going to be sending the books to basically all over the world. I will have reached out to you by the time you hear this, check your YouTube DMs and make sure you respond to me so I can get your information to send you the book. If you didn't listen to the last episode, the book is called Peak by Anders Ericsson and is the secret to become good at everything. Right on. So moving into this week's episode, this is a topic that you see a lot of places, not just a trading psychology podcast. I have learned over time that if I don't have one of these, I am a bit lost. And the more things I have had to do over time, the more important this has been to me. And we're talking about daily routines. So Rob, I have discovered really important reasons to have a daily routine um, instead of before when I just kind of winged it and I just kind of saw what the day brought to me first and then played off of that, that really didn't work. What are some reasons that you have come up with over time for a daily routine working and why does it work so well for you? Well, routines are so important. If you've been listening to this podcast at all, there is one underlying theme, consistency. That's it. Consistency. Everything we're talking about, all these biases, all these things that are going to happen to you, they make you inconsistent. Trading psychology is about being consistent. And there's nothing better to be consistent than to have really well-defined routines that you follow. These will help you with consistency, which is why we do this podcast, because trading psychology tricks you into thinking about being inconsistent and deviating from your systems. Routines are going to help you be a little bit more disciplined. Good. And I know a lot of you out there have full-time jobs. So part of your day is already spoken for, which actually makes the daily routine a little bit easier because there's just simply less to schedule, I think. Maybe harder to get it in, but as far as mapping it all out, you might have an easier time as somebody like me who does not have a full-time job and needs to find a way to occupy time or else I, you guys know me, I can be all over the place. I need that structure and I need that discipline for myself or else I would get very, very stressed out to the point where I was like, all right, I'm going to need to outsource half of these things I'm doing to somebody who I don't know, probably don't fully trust, doesn't really understand my business the way I do. Um, but I really, at the end of the day, didn't need to do that. All I had to do was have a structure and follow it. And I can do it by myself without getting stressed out and actually start to enjoy most of the things that I found to be really obligatory in the past. Rob and I are both going to go over our daily routines soon. Um, but Rob, you had more on this. So before we do that, uh, why don't you talk a little bit more about the overall importance and, uh, and how it affects your life and how it affects your average trader's life. Patrick, when you were talking, you said a couple things like stress and other things in your life. And that's what routines are for. Remember, when we sit down behind the system, we want to be in the right place. Episode number two was all about brain chemistry. And we share with you some studies about hunger, about sleep, about all these things that can cause you to, when you sit down behind your system, you're not fully there. You're not actually healthy enough to make trades. What you just said is there's sometimes in your life 
when you sit down and you probably shouldn't be clicking a button because of all the other things happening in your life. Life is stressful. We all have relationships. We all have families. We all have friends. We all have all of these stressors out there in our life. They creep into your trading. And so one of the big importance of a daily routine is to where you can take a little bit of time and make sure that those stressors are not going to affect your trades. The brain chemistry needs to be correct when you sit down or else you literally cannot use the prefrontal cortex, which is required to make a living in trading. Very interesting. So there is a scientific component to this. It's not just on an individual basis, huh? All of episode two touched on some of the things that can undermine you. And it's not about you. It's not about your brain. It's about the chemicals swirling in your brain. We have to understand there's life outside of trading and that can get into your trading and really undermine it. Let's get into daily routine. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about my daily routine. And Patrick will share with you a little bit of his daily routine. It doesn't matter what you do. All that matters is that you do it and you plan it out. Now, the very first thing I think you should really look at every single time you sit down to trade is take a personal evaluation of yourself. Are you in the right place? Are you hung over from the day before? Now, I bring that up because I actually had a comment on one of our videos saying, oh yeah, I used to trade when I was hung over and it never worked out well. Yeah, that's probably a very easy call to make. Are you in the right place? Are you stressed? Are you tired? What are the potential problems that could be getting into you? So take personal inventory and evaluation of where you are. And then I also want you to challenge your biases. We've talked about two biases here. We talked about confirmation bias and we talked about recency bias. When you sit behind a system, you are going to be bringing in baggage. We've used that term for all of the podcast. Is it your baggage is stuff that happened to you in the past, in the recent past, in the far away past. If you've taken three losses in a row, what baggage are you bringing in? What are your biases? Do you have a bias now that's going to change your decision making? You may come in and sit down and say, boy, I really think Euro is going to take a dive. Okay, why? Why do you have that bias? Did you read an article the other day? Did you read something or hear something? Or you had someone mention something to you? Did that creep into your mind to where you're now not looking at the correct chart? Where the euro is going up on a chart and all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I want a short euro because I think it's going down. So take a personal evaluation and challenge your biases. You may come in and sit down and say, hey, I think the markets are going up. Why do you think that? Does the chart match your bias? If the chart does not match your bias, guess what? Your bias is wrong. The market is always right. That's the first thing about routines is to make sure that you are in the right place. We've talked about a few things. We talked about meditation. For a lot of you, meditation is going to be a great way to start your trading day, whether you start it in the morning, afternoon, at night just to take a little bit of time and try to flush everything away. I've shared with you that I am terrible at meditation. So for me, I start my trading day in the morning. I always get in the shower. I always get dressed. I always do this routine before. And when I drive into the office, I go through certain things to when I show up behind that system, I am ready to go. I never roll out of bed and just go straight to the computer ever. I need this process to where I go through and I go through these daily routines of checking the futures. I put CNBC on while I'm in the shower. I make sure that when I finally sit down behind that system, I am in the right state of mind to make good trades. So that's really my daily routine. I spent a lot of time trying to first off, start the morning with a completely blank slate. Now we've used the term, you don't know shit. Guess what? Every day, you don't know shit. It's wiped clean. Whatever you thought yesterday, you have to throw that away and reevaluate. Where's the market? Where's the trends? What are the indicators? Have a blank slate and then look at the market where it is. Then you're going to be in a much better place to make trades. Let me jump in here because I think that's really 
slick. And that does tie into things we've talked about in the past, because I would have never thought to place that on a daily routine. You know, you really do have to wipe that slate clean because what you don't want to do is end up like 99% of people. You know, I just, if if I take it back to crypto, you know, I'm a part of maybe 12, 13 Discord forums and almost all of them have some kind of investing sub forum in them. And they're all just complete donkey shows, every single one of them, because you go in there, people will say, you know, I think this particular cryptocurrency is going to go here. Or I think it's going to fall to here. And then I will come in and I will ask them, why do they say that? And they usually don't have an answer. And what I bet happened is just like you said, they read an article, they saw somebody else say it, maybe it was on Twitter. Sometimes it's on a chart, but yeah, they have this weird confirmation bias. They don't even know where they got it from half the time. They're pretty much ruined because now they're stuck in that one frame of mind. They can't you know, do what you always say, trade the market in front of you. You know, which is really what you which what you have to do. So yeah, step number one, get that crap out of your head before the game even starts. Yeah, Maverick, we have that saying: trade the market in front of you, not the market you want it to be. That, that, that's where I got the saying from. <laughs> not the market you think it should be. That's the biggest one. Hey, this market shouldn't be doing this. The euro shouldn't be going up right now. Well, guess what? It is going up. Whether or not you think it should go up doesn't matter. You're wrong. Flush that all away, whatever you can do in this routine to get rid of all of those biases to where you can now look at all the information and use your prefrontal cortex to actually make logical, rational decisions based on the chart. That's the first thing you need to do every single day, every single week, every single month. That is a huge part of being a trader. Yeah, because your bias on something might actually be correct but you just might not have the timeline correct. Like if you're really bearish on the Euro, it might absolutely go down. It might go down a lot, but it may have to retrace for a few days first. You know, so that's, that's one of the biggest problems I ran into is I was historically correct, but I also trade the daily chart. And so you know, if I'm not trading what's in front of me and I'm trading the future, how far into the future are we talking? I can't answer that. Therefore, my bias is not only pretty useless, but it's it's now, now it's working against me. And uh, we can't have things like that. My worst loss ever came in 1999 when I was absolutely 100% convinced that there was a bubble in the dot-com stocks. So convinced. I knew it. I knew it. So I went heavily short. I lost 85% of my account. And historically, I was right. The problem was I was five months too early. And there's a very famous saying in the market, the market can stay irrational a lot longer than you can stay solvent. Stay solvent. Yeah. And did you sell? Uh, I was pushed out from margin. Oh, shit. Okay. It's a lesson that I had to learn early on to where I realized I can never put myself in that situation again because it wiped me out. I just started over. But Patrick, I knew I was right. Do you see the irony of that? I knew I was right. That's why I keep saying you don't know shit because you might be right. But as you said, you might not have the time frame right. The charts were screaming that the market was still going higher. And I was so convinced I disregarded the charts and went short and I paid for it. Yep. No, I learned this probably more from investing that I am always too early. Sometimes that's a month too early. Sometimes that's a few years too early. So I really forced myself to take a longer term view on things. It did me really, really well. And so I try to preach that to people on my uh, my other podcast, knowing in the back of my head, that's a really tough thing to do because people just don't want to wait that long. But literally, if you want to have long-term success, uh, which is what everybody wants to have, that that's the only way to play it. So yeah, it's, it's a bit different than trading, of course, but you have to allow yourself room to be wrong. Uh, you can't just say, I know I'm right on this like you did and play it because even if you are, if you don't get the timing right, it just doesn't matter. Now, we've been spending a lot of time on this one concept of wiping the slate clean, bringing in no baggage. We've been spending that much time because it's so important. Because if you don't do that step, everything after that in routines doesn't matter. Because if you have a bias, do you understand that you've predetermined what your next steps are going to be? Once you decide that Euro is going down and you're convinced of it, your next steps are predetermined. You are no longer going to be following any sort of routine because you already predetermined your actions in the future. So once you wipe the slate clean, now you simply go through your checklist. 
At Maverick, we do a relative strength and weakness scoring system where we go through all the currencies and basically score them from strongest to the weakest. That's my next routine where I then focus on what are the correct pairs to trade during this time frame that I'm looking at. After that, it's simply looking for a chart, waiting for the trigger. And if you want, you can set alerts. I set a lot of alerts, say, hey, these are, these are the currency pairs I wanna trade, and these are the prices I wanna trade them at. And I set alerts, and then I don't need to sit there and watch them because screen watching is detrimental to your health. What about you, Patrick? Uh, 100%. I remember back in the day when I watched screens for about six hours in a row from 12 o'clock midnight to about six in the morning after USD news would come out and then try to go to sleep with just a boatload of anxiety. And that never worked. Um, so just for health and uh, overall wellness, certainly not a good idea. Uh, but also it's, it's way too likely to coerce you to do something you don't want to do, seeing things in real time, because you're also way too zoomed in if you're doing things this way. And it's really hard to avoid any kind of confirmation bias if you're constantly watching price go up or down, especially when it goes up fast or goes down fast, it's going to cause you to make decisions you shouldn't be making. You're right. Having a game plan beforehand and saying, okay, I'm only going to do, if you're intraday, saying I'm going to do X when Y happens is, is 100 times better. This can be used on any time frame. It's the idea, the concept of you've wiped your slate clean, you've looked at the charts, you've looked at the data, and you're now going to make the most rational decision you can. You pre-plan your trade saying, when the price gets to X, I'm going to do Y. And when I do Y, then I'm going to put my stop here. I'm going to take profits here. As much as you can pre-plan these things out, then it becomes less likely to be spontaneous, less likely to be influenced by other things. This is why the routine is so important because you go through all these processes, you predetermine all the things you're going to do based on your blank slate because you're looking at just actual facts and charts. Determine the entry price in advance and then follow your system until the trade is done. That's consistency. That's what we want everyone to be able to do every single time they sit down behind a system on any time frame. And just a reminder, everybody. Um, this is for intraday traders specifically to where I know there are a handful of you out there, even though, you know, my channel doesn't preach that I've had a lot of people come and say, Hey, you know, I do everything you say. I just, I just do it on the four hour chart or I do it on the 15 minute chart. And there's some people who say I do it your way, but I also do intraday. Um, so I know what we're saying right now doesn't apply to everybody or what Rob is saying in the last five minutes or so, but it does apply to a lot of you. And there are certain aspects of this strategy that you can take and really place anywhere. Um, so even if you're just strictly a daily chart trader, even a weekly chart trader, you know, pay attention to these things um, because, you know, it's like every episode I end up learning something new myself. And I'm like, wow, how can I take that one thing Rob just said and apply it to what I do, regardless of what it is? Now, I always like to give definitive answers as much as I possibly can. Some topics, you have to be a little vague and open-ended, but this one, I'm going to be very precise. I'm going to share with you exactly my daily routine, exactly what I do. It doesn't mean that's what you have to do, but I want to give you a good idea of what a professional prop trader does on a daily basis. As I said, I start off with shower, getting ready, shave, all that stuff. And that all that time is spent. Again, I've got CNBC on in the background. It is white noise. It is completely white noise. But what it does, it gets me thinking about the day, the markets, where we are. Please don't let anything you hear on CNBC creep into your subconscious. It's going to try. It's going to try. And I remember as a young trader, it used to do it all the time to where I actually started watching CNBC on mute to where I just saw it and I didn't hear what anyone was saying. That may be something you want to do if you want to try it out. I know, Patrick, you don't really love watching CNBC, which is fine, but I do that just to get in the mindset of, okay, I'm ready to go. I've made sure that I've checked all my biases. If I'm coming into the day thinking, hey, I think this is going to be an up day with risk on assets. Why do I think that? Do I think that because of that's where my positions are? Or is that because that's what the chart is saying? 
So challenge those biases. When I sit down, the first thing I go through is my relative strength and weakness exercise. I look at all the currencies and I score them all, which one's the strongest, which one is the weakest. And I have targets on all those. And that tells me which pairs are going to be the ones I trade. When I start out the day, I am not looking at all of the pairs. I'm not looking at just Euro, dollar, or pound, yen. I start with a blank slate and the market tells me these are the pairs that you should be trading. So maybe one day I wake up, I do my scoring system, and it tells me that Euro, Swiss, Franc are the strongest and yen and Aussie are the weakest. Now I know these are my pairs I'm looking at. I'm looking at Euro, Aussie, long. I'm looking at Aussie, Swiss, Franc, short. I'm looking at Euro, yen, long. I'm looking at Swiss, Franc, yen, long. After that, I ignore all the rest of the currency pairs. And these are the only ones I'm interested in. I look at their chart patterns. I look at their trends. I look at their support and resistance points. I snap some Fibonacci lines and I actually set up, this is where I want to make this trade. This is my perfect trading system right here to where I think if it gets to this point, I think this is the highest likelihood of me making a profit. One of the things I love to say to all of my traders, imagine you could only put in an order that wouldn't be filled for 30 minutes. Now think about that. If you had to only put in orders, and if you put in an order right now, the earliest it would be triggered is 30 minutes from this moment. Would you trade in a different manner? A lot of you would, because all of a sudden, there's no impulse of what's happening right now. All that impulse of what's happening right now, I'm going to miss it or whatever, it's gone. Now you're thinking, oh, what is my perfect entry point? What is the perfect point I want to enter in? And then you can build your trade around that. And you see how that has almost no emotion attached to it? Again, if you had to decide now, put in an order, and it wouldn't be filled for 30 minutes or an hour. That's how I like to trade is identify things when there's no money on the line. In episode two, we actually talked about when a group of people play blackjack. When there was no money on the line, they all use their prefrontal cortex. When money was on the line, they all use their insula and to where fear and greed actually took over. Make all your decisions before money is on the line. I always say this with all our traders. If I could script this trade out, this is what I would like. For example, let's say I've identified Euro dollar and I want to buy Euro dollar right around 107. And I talk about right now, Euro dollar is at 106.50. And if I could script this trade out, the Euro dollar would go sideways for two more days and then break out of a high base pattern somewhere on Wednesday, right around this time period. You see what I did there? If I could script this out, this is the perfect trade I would like to make this week. And that's literally the trade. You script it out. You script out what you want to do, how you want to trade. You put those alerts out there. When it hits your alert, then you can go in, make the decision, build your trade, make sure everything is good. That is the process to arriving to a trade that was completely used with your prefrontal cortex. And then after that, it's simply following the system of your position management, which there should be no thought involved in that. It's a system. That's it for me, Patrick. What about you? Two things before. I start mine. First of all, when the market is crashing like really bad, there is no other place I would rather watch than CNBC and watching them panic and get all emotional and try to explain it away. It is must see TV. So if the market ever really starts to crash, uh, my message to everybody is uh, if, you, if you didn't like CNBC in the past, uh, turn it on. It's absolutely fantastic. You can see when the bottom is close when they start yelling at each other on CNBC. I love it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's um, they're, they're the biggest reverse indicator out there from a top and a bottom perspective. We have people from all walks of life and all styles of trading who watch this channel. People primarily trade the way I do because they follow my system. But as I said before, we have people from all over the place. You listen to to Rob's list and you're about to listen to mine. I wouldn't pay so much attention to the actual steps because it may not necessarily apply to you, but pay attention to just how structured and how precise this is. There's a reason for that. And we may or may not be going over this in a future episode, but I think those are really the important points. Now for me, for what it's worth, 
like I said, this is just me. This isn't going to be most people. What Rob just said is not going to be for most people either, but my situation is very different. So I don't run a large business like Rob does. My own businesses, but they're very small and they're very tailored to me. Um, I also don't have a job where I have a wage or a salary, meaning I have absolutely nothing to fall back on. So I need to make sure I maintain the lifestyle I have, and I need to also be growing it at the same time. I struggle mightily to do that unless I have a structure in place. I finally put one in a couple of years ago, and this is mine. So if you bear with me for the next few minutes, at least I'll read mine. So I usually get up right about eight o'clock in the morning. And the very first thing I do is I throw on a podcast and I go for a walk, um, usually about a half hour. Now I do have a lot of things right in front of me, not right in front of me, but with, within walking distance. So my grocery store, butcher shop, drug store, dry cleaners, things like that. And so if I can run errands during this time, I will. Um, if I don't have anything to do, then I'll just walk for about a half hour. And it really gets me physically and mentally where I need to be. And then as soon as I get back, I'll put my computer on and I'll start tackling high priority things. I separate them to high, medium, and low. I knock out the high priority stuff first. So that's going to be any videos I have to create, edit, upload, podcasts, blogs, obligatory stuff like that. And then any, you know, I own two businesses. So any admin stuff I need to do with those businesses, that's going to come at this time too. And only after I'm done with those things, do I eat breakfast. That's when breakfast starts. After breakfast, I do things that are more medium priority. So I've become a semi-authority in the macro space and the, the natural resources space and the crypto space. Yeah, you don't just get there by listening to a podcast and watching a few videos. It takes deep research. And so that's when I start that. I'll answer emails and I'll do the majority of my social media at this time. That includes moderating YouTube comments, tweeting, Discord, you know, whatever the case is. And then I will either go to the gym or I will go outside and get some sun. Uh, I live in a place where the sun shines almost every day. So if I don't have to work out, I'll do one of those two things. I find both of those things to be tremendously important for every single aspect of my life. So I make sure I get it in. That's when I get it in. Come back, have a quick lunch. And then after lunch is where I dedicate time to more low, lower priority. But these are the things that I, do, I think are the most fun for me. And that's why I save them till later. I get the obligatory stuff out of the way early and I save the more fun stuff for later. I think this is a hundred times better than doing this in reverse because these are like the new projects I'm working on. I'm working on a couple new things. I'm looking up different metaverse projects too, you know, like really fun, exciting stuff that stimulates me. I don't get stimulated early and then peter out later. I save it for now. And so by the time I'm done with that, 30 minutes of Spanish, and then by the time that's done, it's time to trade. I'll look at my charts, put in my trades. Since I already have my charts open, this would normally be the time where I work on my algorithm and try to improve it and test indicators and things like that. I'm currently going down a rabbit hole with a particular set of indicators from a particular platform. I'm going to kind of not mention that here, Rob. I'll tell you off camera, but that's when I do that. Then it's pretty much getting to be time for dinner. And unless I'm going out with friends or a girl or something like that, I almost always cook dinner. So that takes a while. After that, I usually do stuff around the house. And only after all that's done, do I actually relax and either watch some YouTube videos or play a little PlayStation or read a book. And then I take my showers at night. So I take a shower and then pretty much I'm ready for bed at that point. And that is my entire day minus Sunday. Sunday is the day I don't really do anything, but that usually follows Saturday night, which is the one day I go out. So if I am hungover, at least it's on a day where really nothing's going on. This is what I follow and it takes up all of my day. And it's great because there's no idle downtime. There's always something I could be doing. If I don't have that type of structure in front of me, I told you before, Rob, I tend to wander and drift pretty darn easily. And I don't take drugs for that like I did when I was in high school. <laughs> so, you know, I need to rely on things like that. And listen, they're so vitally important. You know, people think YouTubers and, you know, people who trade the daily chart don't do much. Now, we work all the time <laughs> because we pretty much have to. And this is how 
I go about my day. And uh, like I said before, if I didn't have this, I don't really know where I would be. Um, but thank God I have it. I have whiteboards and calendars everywhere, so I never miss things. And, you know, things like this just really help me keep it together throughout the day and just get a ton of stuff done. And I'm your typical guy. I like building things. I like creating things. I like fostering them and watching them grow. And um, as much as this seems like a lot, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, Patrick, one of the things that I've really hated about getting older, I shouldn't say I hate it, but I remember when I was younger. And older people would always be like, oh, you're young, just wait, you'll mature. I hated that. I hated that so much. I'm like, whatever, old guy. And you know what? Now that I'm the old guy, I hate that they were right. One of the things that you talked about is you talked about what's best for you. One of the greatest things about getting older is that you stop lying to yourself. When I was in my 20s, I was good at everything. I could do everything. Oh, you need me to do drywall? I can do drywall. You want me to do this? I can do that. Guess what? I'm done lying to myself. I suck at drywall. I hate doing drywall. And now I refuse to do drywall. I refuse to paint. My wife finally said to me, you're terrible at painting. I'm like, I know it's because I hate it. And so you finally get to a point where you learn yourself. And as you've said, Patrick, you find exactly what works for you. For any of you younger traders out there, I hesitate because I remember when I was a younger trader and older traders would say to me, well, oh, just do this. And I'd be like, whatever, old guy. And I hate that they were right. And so I'm asking the younger traders here to maybe just open your mind up a little bit and say, okay, maybe they might be right. They might be a little right. Really think about who you are. What works for me won't work for you. What works for Patrick won't work for me. You really have to build your own trading system. At Maverick, the first thing we have people do is take a personality assessment to figure out a little bit more about who you are so you can build a system around your personality. You have to build this you in order for you to be able to follow it. Because I'll tell you right now, you can't follow what I do. If you have a hard time getting up in the morning, don't trade the US Open on the market because you're going to fail at that. If you're a night owl, use that. You're going to be trading in the Asian and the European session if you live in North and South America. It's just how it works. Work with who you are, whether you do it in the morning, afternoon, night, whatever steps you take, it's irrelevant what steps you take. What is relevant is, are you showing up in front of that system with a clear mind in your prefrontal cortex? If the answer is yes, you did it. Great job. If the answer is no, you fail that. That's it. As simple as that. And one thing I will say too, that I think could very well apply to most people. One of the things I do that I think would really be great for the majority of people is to save my leisure time until the very end. Almost allow that to be your reward for you know, a day well spent and a day well accomplished. Because I used to put that earlier. Sometimes I would start my day with that and then I would just be an absolute mess. I don't know what it was. Rob, maybe you have a, a brain chemistry reason for this, but I would start off, okay, I need to warm up my brain. Let's watch some you know, enjoyable YouTube videos or let's go over Twitter or something like that. Really didn't work at all. It would screw up the entire timing of my day and I wouldn't get a lot done. When I started saving that stuff for the very end, it made all the difference in the world. And I really enjoyed that extra time a lot more than I did when I was just, you know, half asleep, you know, at 8.30 in the morning. Well, it absolutely makes sense because that's how our brains work. Our brains work on this reward system, that dopamine hit. And if you can delay that gratification, when you do get the gratification, it's better than if you just got it right away. Delay gratification actually ends up being a much more positive reinforcement than instant gratification. Makes total sense. Yeah. And we've gone over delayed gratification quite a bit on the channel. So yeah, uh, traders, regardless if you trade like Rob, if you trade like me, if you're more like Rob or you're more like me, maybe allow that to be an extra piece of alpha you can take away when it comes to your own personal routine. So uh, Rob, I think we have gone over um, pretty much all the most impor important points. Do you have anything else to add? Not really. I just want to reinforce whatever you do. The goal is when you sit down behind the system, you are completely using your prefrontal cortex. Everything is gone. The baggage is gone. The hangover is gone. 
the wh- whatever it is, is gone. And you are fully there, fully ready to take data in that is not biased and make a rational decision on your trading. There's no perfect recipe to get there. There's your recipe to get there. It's up to you to figure out what that recipe is, codify it, and follow it, and gain more consistency in your trading. Well said, Rob. Uh, So I want to thank you, all of you, for enjoying the Trading Psychology Podcast, episode 15. I will say episode 16 is going to be a bit of a continuation on what we spoke about today. So if you like this episode, you are sure to like next week's episode. But join us next week anyway, uh, here at the Trading Psychology Podcast. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.